Live from somewhere in the Midwest, Netters Network and YouTube bring you Netters Network Retro Cinema. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Netter's Network Retro Cinema Presents. And tonight we're going to be watching, I guess it's a comedy western. Oh, it absolutely is a comedy western, yes. Sorry, my intro is starting all over again. Let me stop that. Stop. There we go. (laughs) Well, I saw it going again. I'm like, why is it doing that? Um. Anyway, so we're going to be watching a comedy western called Cat Baloo. And who is the star of the show, sweetie? Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. Absolutely. And his horse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was hearing about some of the antics with the horse. Uh, I, was reading, I was reading some background on this. Oh, I hope it wasn't spoiled for you, although I spoiled a lot of it already for you. Well, a lot of those animals in these movies are trained to act a certain way. So, you know drunk act loopy you know you know they'll give some sort of signal yeah the horse will like kind of lay down or whatever the, the, yeah I, I just think the best is that scene from the opening where we're both kid shaleen and he's sitting on his horse and the horse and he are both leaning up against the building it's it's funny you'll see you'll see yep oh and i just realized i did not put the link at the top let me grab that real quick uh-huh. But, yeah, actually, Lee Marvin stars in it twice. (laughs) He plays two characters. You can see them on screen right now. Uh, Well, I am finding the link for the the Cosme link for tonight. Troy, what is your um, experience with this movie? And I forgot to ask, what you sipping on? And welcome to the stream. uh, Thank you very much. (laughs) I'm sipping on a, a Diet Squirt, which you just handed me so you actually know the answer to that question um <laughs> but uh yeah no i have a a great history with this i uh God, i saw this man i was a little kid when i saw this and uh it was coming on tv it was wgn i don't i it wasn't like a, a family classics or anything like that it was just a, a wgn movie and uh I knew nothing about it, but my grandfather was all excited. He said, oh, Capaloo, Lee Marvin, I love this movie. And uh, he starts doing the happy birthday to you. And I had no context for this. I had no idea what this was about. And sat and watched it with him, and he would laugh. I, I didn't see my grandfather laugh very much. He was a pretty stoic kind of guy. But he laughed through this whole movie. And, uh, and so I, I, I enjoyed it. And uh, so every time it would come on, I'd, I'd watch it and think of him, and uh, you know, just kind of, kind of ignore the uh, the female lead. You know, this is the only movie I'll I'll watch with, uh, with Jane Fonda in it. Which is why my icon. Yeah, is is Denise? that's what you chose. Very <laughs> very important scene, though. I mean, the whole story revolves around uh, basically this. So I don't want to spoil anything, but very important scene. Yeah. And as I recall from our conversations, Big Alex, you've never seen this before. I have never seen it. This is this is my this will be my first viewing. I've uh, been reading about it, you know, a little you know mm-hmm. behind the scenes like you get on IMDb, and I'm really looking forward to it. It sounds like a hoot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a hoot yeah, yeah, it is. Oh no, absolutely, absolutely, and uh, talk about a diverse cast. Of course, they didn't do that before the year two thousand, right? But yeah, very, very diverse yeah. cast. But, but I, I, I do want to say you were talking about watching it with your grandfather. And, yeah, and, and don't you love a movie even more when it brings back that kind of a memory? Well, yeah, and I'll be honest with you, it's kind of because of my. Well, okay, obviously. 
because of my grandfather's why I saw this movie for the first mm -hmm. time. So I was introduced to this movie specifically. But then he started rattling off all these other Lee Marvin movies I should see. You know, Dirty Dozen and this, that, and the other. And I was Dirty like, Dozen was a awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So subsequently, I ended up seeing those movies. Never would have seen them if it weren't for my... Well, I shouldn't say never, but that was the catalyst. My grandfather. I'm sure, you know, years later, I'd have met somebody who would have been like, Oh, you've never seen a Lee Marvin movie, or you know something like that, but yeah. Oh, I'm drinking uh, Diet Mountain Dew, by the way. There, you go. there uh, you go. I'm drinking Diet Dr Pepper. We're all I'm drinking so diet drinks, old people. <laughs> well, I'm drinking a Diet Dr Pepper, which I normally don't drink soda because I'm I usually stick, try to stick to my She's water. She's still in celebration. I'm mode. still celebrating mm -hmm. because for those of you who didn't uh, go to Troy Stream last night, yep, I had my annual review, and my annual review was utterly fantastic in fact my boss is putting me in for a promotion so excuse me <coughs> problems with drinking sodas it makes you burp um <laughs> true <coughs> well i just had that kind of vapor lock in my throat um but you know why it was such a fabulous review right because you're so fabulous oh you're so sweet it's Look, true this is why we've been married 30 years yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be pretty now, now, gotta see be this good. is why this is why you have to drink diet because this is just too sugar just too sweet right yeah 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 but there you go. <laughs> well let me say hello to the chat hello to the chat hello chat uh first up was connie cleary hi How connie you doing, sweetie glad you're here and sir torin clegane who was my once in future guest, he uh, he was on with me last night. He'll be on again with me next week. And he is dropping everybody's links. Thank you so he's much awesome for doing that, that sweetie. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I see Daniel here, and he says, "Sorry, I'm late." Was listening to some Leonard Burst. I yes, I saw the stream <laughs> yes, came up, and I heard the story from Al. I'll have to catch up on that. Sounds very exciting. To <laughs> you got you got a lot of material to get through. It sounds like mm -hmm. good, good, yeah. good on you, mate. We also have Geek Flag with Nate Knows. Hey, hey Nate. Sweetie. Good to Thank see you, you man. Being here. And uh, you got the link uh, up at the top now? I got the link for Cosmic Good. pinned to the top. So if you don't have, uh, and you know, you guys are probably seeing, uh, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this. I guess it's probably a good thing. So on this link, if you look at your suggested videos, there's probably a paid one for, you know, renting it. Uh, renting the movie from YouTube. You certainly could do that if you so choose, but uh, otherwise, if you don't have Watch your own... Watch it for free. Yeah, if you if you don't already have a physical copy, which you might want to, and if you've never seen it before and you see it tonight, you're going to see why you should have your own copy of it. Um, I will be uh, hosting it, as usual, on Cosme. Link at the top of the chat so that you can watch along with us and I suppose the upside to that is you're absolutely in sync with us because you're watching it at exactly the same time we are. You, yep. you know, otherwise you got that three, two, one, and you might be a second or two off or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Geek Flag with Nate says I'm drinking classic Coke. And classic Connie Coke. Says, yeah. Yes. And Connie says I'm drinking black coffee and water. Is it black coffee made with water? Well. <sighs> Or it could, you know, it sounds very Greek because what they what if you have Greek coffee, a lot of mm -hmm. them will have a glass of water with it because Greek, oh, okay. because Greek Greek coffee is like high high test. Oh, absolutely, at high octane, maybe you need to take a take a little bit of a rinse ah, okay. too. See, I'm yeah. not a coffee drinker, so I have uh, no idea. But I I love to hear someone say that they're drinking black coffee. I don't think enough people do that. How how do you how do I like my coffee? Black as midnight on a moonless night. Unless you're quoting airplane. <laughs> I like it black. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's your channel. You can make whatever joke you want, of course. And it's then a line from a movie. It is a line from a movie. Hey Boosh, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, there's a lot of lines <laughs> from movies that get you in trouble, though. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, true. that's true. And especially these days. What are they saying now? The, the first 15 minutes of a stream, you use certain words. Now, she didn't use any bad bad language. It was just no. a little bit of a blue joke. But, yeah. Oh, Geek Flag, what Nate says, French coffee is also very strong with the glass of water on the side. It's the only way to drink it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
it's very it's it's very true um mediterranean thing (laughs) yeah you know there's that french press right and it really like squeezes out those oils that gives it that that thick rich bitter flavor someone was telling me though that despite the stronger flavor you know the higher concentration says it doesn't have more more caffeine than regular percolation i I find that difficult to believe. I might have to look into that a little bit more. Well, espresso doesn't have more caffeine than regular coffee either, but people think it does because it's these little shots and they're like, oh, yes, lots well, of caffeine. Well, and yeah, and they, they grind it up real fine. You get, yeah, yeah. I used it, to have to serve espresso. I'll so tell I you what, though, history on there's, it. You, there's something to be said for the psychological effect. You know, that strong hit of coffee, that flavor, that that alone wakes you up without without the chemical. Oh, yeah. Bush says uh, Cuban coffee is super strong. I have never had Cuban coffee, but I have heard great things about it. I am kind of interested. I heard that Turkish coffee is so thick you can stand your spoon in it. I wouldn't know. Mm. I've never had it. Not that thick, but I think that's I think it's a bit hyper, hyperbolic, but it is very well. Thick, the reason thick, there is a reason they say that though what ends up happening is you end up with like a film over the top that you are supposed to scrape off with your with your spoon because you get the you what 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 would be considered dregs and and grounds you know mm-hmm. um so that's that's why you see people do that with with turkish coffees again never had mm-hmm. it but uh but i have <laughs> heard uh, gosh, now you guys got me wanting coffee. That's the that's the one thing I hear about because I I had I worked with a guy who was like Greek, so I I like learned a lot about Greek stuff, and, and we were talking about Greek coffee one day and how how it's made and you know it's like everything's just in the pot and you just mm-hmm, pour mm-hmm. from the top, you know because all the grounds are at, go to the bottom, yeah, the bottom, but you still yep. get you still get grounds in it, absolutely, and, and the sugar is. And you put sugar right in it. And it depends on how you like. You can have it black or up to. You mean like this one? There's, there's different names and everything like that. Geek Flag when he says that's true. Um, it doesn't have a more caffeine stronger, stronger flavor, but the caffeine level is usually the same, or yeah. sometimes depending on the bean or less. And then right after that said, "Too much Starbucks coffee, coffee, coffee." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just had 25 coffees. Now I want to paint the house. <laughs> it's the middle of the night. Well, I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> well, I, was, I, I always remember we used to sell little um, chocolate covered espresso beans. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. You chew on enough of those, you start flying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, See, because I don't like coffee so much. I tried those because it's like it's chocolate covered the thing. And I love chocolate. I hated them. It was so bitter for the bean that it was like, oh, yuck, 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 yuck. I get it. I get I, it. It's I, an acquired taste. Uh, That's I, what I, I figured. I will. I will say. I played a played a joke on my girlfriend once, saying they were raising nets here. Try one. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's evil. You know that that even if you enjoy chocolate covered coffee beans, when you're expecting it to be a raisin, right. that's like. Yeah. Oop, oop. Or like when you like when you you expect soda and it's water or something like that. I did yeah, that once. I, I went to drink what I thought was water, mm-hmm. and it was Sprite. Yeah, not that you don't like Sprite. It's just you, you know, aren't expecting <laughs> it. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Geek Flag said uh, high blood pressure, so he doesn't drink as much anymore. Uh, teetotaler now. Well, keep in mind there, you know, some of those teas can be pretty high in caffeine too. Um, That's true. You gotta be careful. Yeah. You know, the difference between chamomile and English breakfast, you know. Um, I like English breakfast. Anyway, why are we talking so much about coffee? Although coffee is a wonderful topic and a wonderful drink. But uh, it started know, because I, Connie Cleary was had coffee and water. Absolutely. That's, that's, that, that was the rabbit hole we went down. You know, that's fine. But uh, let's bring it back to, uh, to a comedy, a uh, Western comedy classic. Where they probably drink whiskey. Where yeah, well, Kid Shaleen sure does. Yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> so Lee Marvin sounded like too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Now, for those of you who have not seen this movie before, it's one of those ones where you've got a couple of minstrels going through the movie and singing little 
segments about what's going on. It's really kind of cool. Yeah. I always like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's like the tale is being told retroactively. So, yeah, a lot of fun. I think you're going to – and, and, and it starts Cole. where it ends, basically. So I'm sorry. One of them is Nat King Cole. Yeah, one of them is Nat King Cole. Absolutely true. That's what I was saying. Diverse cast, you know. Okay, one last thing on coffee. Boosh says, of Starbucks, my father said, coffee isn't supposed to taste like candy. We drink it because we're old and we need it. Yeah, it's funny you say that because we, we just uh, did our uh, monthly shopping today. We're in the checkout line and they have, uh, you know, the try to get you to buy stuff on the way out. They had a bunch of those, like, Frappuccinos and whatnot. And that's like... You know, this sounds really good. And I'm like, yeah, it is really good, but it's like a jillion calories. It's all sugar and, and vanilla. Yeah, it's like I had one of the, I think it was a vanilla or maybe it was a caramel one once. Yeah. It was just all sugar. I couldn't have more than a couple sips before I'm like, no, can't drink this. It's, it's, it's like a, a, the a, bottles that they make. Yeah, the bottles. Yeah, yeah. yeah the there, and there, there comes a point where it's no longer, it's not even coffee. You know, it's a milkshake with with a little bit of coffee added to it. Well, I can yeah. go for a milkshake. We have to go yeah. steak and shake again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you oh, go. I always, I always loved going to Arby's and getting a Jamuka shake. Those Ooh. were good. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And we've been to Arby's a bunch of times over the past year. Okay, next time we go. Yeah, yeah. Well, if this shake machine is isn't broken, or is that just McDonald's? no? That's McDonald's. Yeah, that's just McDonald's. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well, why don't we get into it? Let's do that. Since you are get basically starting for everybody else. I am. Um, uh, however, you ready? if yes. you do have your own stream or physical uh, copy, it's going to be starting out with the uh, the Columbia, uh, you know. Lady with the torch. Yes. Uh, and, that's, and that's important because uh, that becomes part of the part of the show. So. So okay. we're starting we're zero. starting at black before it comes on, right? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Zero zero. Um so if y'all are ready. And just just you know what? Maybe I should just double check with you, Big Al. You're mm -hmm. at an hour thirty six. Um uh, I mine says one thirty two. Uh oh. Uh -uh. Well, we'll see what we'll see what happens. We'll see what yeah. happens. See what the difference is. If at any point during the, the film you you know something seems off or whatever. Never know. Just let us know. And I usually try. I usually try to uh, to see it, but you know, it, okay, it wouldn't be, would not be the first time. Okay, so uh, we're going to start in three, two, one, play. That's my line. And there you go. <laughs> There's Columbia. And if you're laughing already, that means you're a little bit ahead of us already. Whoa. No, I was laughing at uh, Metter saying, that's my line. Oh, okay. And here's the minstrels. The Ballad of Cat Baloo. It's a hanging day. Yeah. I love this tune. Hanging cat balloon. Everyone's heading towards the gallows. Yep. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
The Stop costumes. Yep. The uh, the costumes are spot on. And you gotta have the old timer sitting there. Mm -hmm. just poor guy Lee here. Marvin. Yes. It's like this, they're probably like, okay, count to three, turn the page. Count to three, turn the page. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Well, the fact is, in editing, they can always pause it as long as they want to. Stubby K. Stubby K, yeah. And then the extra cast. Music Why by Duvall. Sounds like there you're you like a second or two ahead of us. I'm wondering if mine's like just a little fast. Runs a little fast, maybe. It's possible. Let's see. I mean, I love the artwork, too. I don't know if these were specifically for the film or if these were old old woodcuts. Probably the latter. <laughs> A geek flag says, it sounds like they're singing about my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> sounds like they're singing about the actress, but... Uh, Either way. And this is the holier than thou's. Uh, that bugle. <laughs> Can I get a timestamp? Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're looking at. Uh, I got eight. four minutes, four seconds, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're outside the jail cell, and the guys are just finishing the song. Tell me when. Uh, okay, wait. tell me when it's four twenty. Just hit. They're showing Capaloo inside Capaloo. her cell, sewing her dress. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, she's now I'm, looking at the camera. Yeah, I just back in the totally, cell. Totally synced up with a with a one thirty six copy on one twenty on one two three. There you go. I'll just watch it right off the site. Awesome. See, so they do the setup, and then we go back and we, you know, get the whole story. Uh, normal school. Is that the one from... Um, Dr. Lowe? The one who got frozen by Medusa? Ah, you got me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, I can't see the chat, so. <laughs> That's fair. That's fine. I, that's a good, I like that little hat. Oh, yeah. Hair, hairdo. Oh, absolutely. That's very, kind of very attractive. It's like a boater, but a female boater. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like me every Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> T 
temperance mean? I didn't get that one when I was a kid. <laughs> this is a good poet. <laughs> 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 you see how the shtick goes here. A bit of movie trivia. What is the one wardrobe mistake a lot of Westerns make? I'm guessing the hat or the boots. Uh, I think a lot of people would say zippers, even though they're... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't have those back then. Well, they did. They weren't as uh, prominent. Cost, yeah, because they they were a bit costly. Yeah, everything well, was but, but the Levi jeans, though. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> you just interrupted my line. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta start from the beginning. Brother. Hallelujah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and all like that. Well, I like that. Yeah. Ah. Keep every sheriff easy move. <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> Why doesn't he just tank up him to the the same pole he Tommy was on. and the guinea pig collective, how are you doing, my friend? And what you sipping on? A lot of westerns, especially ones made in the past maybe 30 years, have people wearing sunglasses. Uh -huh. And most westerns take place in the 1800s, and sunglasses mm -hmm. weren't invented until 1924. That's really interesting. Didn't know that. Yeah, that's right. A big that was a big one in Django Unchained with uh There are a lot of I don't know if it depends on the film, but that kind of anachronism is sometimes somewhat intentional if you're going mm -hmm. for a bit of a steampunkish kind of thing. Yeah. And and Django wasn't that uh was that a Tarantino film? Yeah, yeah. Tarantino was real big on that that kind of uh you know uh Anachronism. He was okay with it.
<laughs> mm-hmm. I put women on a pedestal too. Yeah. That darn. Gosh. They do leave an Uzi corpse. That is true. (laughs) She whiz. <laughs> he's got such a he's got such a creepy smirk on his face. Yeah. I thought I was. <laughs> you mean I wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> that new firm, Sears and Robot. Robot. So they say. (laughs) Hmm. They do keep going back to that just to remind you, you know, what we know this is leading up to. I tell you, they're my favorite part of this film. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I have heard of that rumor about the lost tribe of Israel yeah Bay. yeah it was uh it was a very uh common belief back then because mm -hmm. you had a lot of Christians that couldn't reconcile you know Americans or excuse me a uh, 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 people living in the new world that had not had any ex, uh, exposure to the uh, scripture before. So they had to have a, an explanation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little baby at the time. I like that chest. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing black, so you know he's the bad guy. He's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> all that genteel dancing nate nate said uh my daddy used to say he loved him a, a shotgun because it'll make a man throw in polka dot shadow yeah yeah it will that brain free, pink too free apple cider That's a bunch of damn language. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. He wants his water rights. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I can see where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just did the bump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's an interesting point too he's he's actually more concerned about jackson than he is about his daughter in this one <laughs> he says that through the whole movie. That looked like a complicated scene to film here. It's well choreographed, that's for sure. It's, it's one shot, isn't it? It is. Well, I mean, if it's edited, it's, it's hard to catch the edit. Yeah. I don't even know if that dance is called. If anyone does. It's a square dance. Is it a square dance? Mm -hmm. I feel like the caller's a little off the beat, but that's okay. There he is. <laughs> What's up for Harry? Kick her in the shins. <laughs> Rain dance, war dance. This one is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> what does he keep saying? Shal Shalom Alakum. It's a it's a Hebrew greeting. Ah! Uh, he scalped him. He thinks he just scalped the guy. <laughs> Every good comedy western has a big fight break out. Absolutely. She's going to scream. No, she hasn't yet.
And I picture like the 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 uh, the violin players just trying to play to keep up with the fight. <laughs> I mean, she's throwing more solid punches than the guys. <laughs> oh, what a waste of cake. <laughs> she wasn't six foot. Well, she's taller than he is. Now, that's a square dance. Well, yeah, you know, the, the campy sound effects especially are important in a comedy. <laughs> Maybe that's another reason why I like this movie so much. There's a lot of people getting drunk in it. <laughs> well, I... I love how he just catches him. <laughs> and he's out. <laughs> I got north, you got us. Wow. Well, I mean, they technically do. drunk and beat people up and now he's out cold <laughs> uh oh <laughs> 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 That's probably true. <laughs> well, you're the one trying to take. Yeah, it was a little bit presumptuous. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, she does run hot and cold. I know, right? Don't go. Right. What are you doing? Okay, let's talk. Yeah, uh, there's nothing worse than making someone talk to a lawyer. Hey, Evelyn, good to see you. If you want to join us where we're at, you know the Cosme link's above. He's kind of not seeing what's going on here. Evelyn, you've seen Cat Blue before, right?
<laughs> he definitely he just, just won't let one that track go. Line. Yeah, he just won't let that go. Well, he is a simple man, yes. <laughs> Oh, we can give you uh we can give you the 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 timestamp time if you want. Uh, Netter, what's the timestamp? I got thirty three minutes, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds, seven seconds, yeah, or nine, ten. Let me know if you need more than that. Yeah, so she definitely has her physical copy, which implies that she's seen it before. See, that's the thing. She just assumed that they were murderers, but they're not. Or just con, what they con men, basically. Basically, yeah. Like yeah. That little, that little banjo. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And if Kid Chilean really does exist, how do you find him? Well, she's going to write the letter and uh, Jackson's going to mail it. To where? That ain't Kid Jaleen. <laughs> that ain't Kid Jaleen. Oh. Sorry, that was a spoiler. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> when they were open. <laughs> now, here's what's very interesting. You listen to the song and what they're saying about Kid Jalina, and it's not really matching up with what you're seeing on the screen, right. which kind it of implies the things they were saying about Cat Blue earlier, maybe not so much. <laughs> Basically, how they found Lee Marvin that day. Yes, exactly, Sir Torn. You're talking about the uh, the song they're singing. The song they're singing is like the dime novels that they're reading. Exactly. Bolstered exactly. up and you know, legendary. And these are just people with their own. And right, and these out. troubadours. That's they would go down to town, you know, singing songs about people just right. like this. So that's the conceit of this movie, as if we're hearing this story from them. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> he plays this role well. He won an Oscar for this. Oh, did he? Yeah, he won well, the Oscar good. For, for Best Actor that year. Uh, which one? Steel knows your kid, Shalene. <laughs> well, Lee Marvin won. Yeah. Probably basically a kid, Shalene part, but. He did it! He missed the barn! <laughs> I mean, ironically, he's going through withdrawal, so he does have the shakes. A drink probably would steady his, his hand. I like that. The kid doesn't drink. He just carries it around to make the sheriff mad. Yeah. Do you notice that his, his personality completely changed? Uh, yep. It's like he gets focused now. Yep. <laughs> See you later, son. See, but now you're realizing he's a guy past his prime. All the stories are in the past. Dang. Oh, yeah, he's good. He when he's drunk. Better. And it's gone. Nate says he's a functional alcoholic. Eh, semi-functional. Need to make him like a Jim Hadar, just hook him up to some alcohol so he could go out all the time. And yeah, Nate's right. We're, we're hearing the troubadours uh, telling the story, but we're seeing what's actually happening. Yeah, good point. The way he put the gun in his pants, his new name could have been the vasectomy kid. <laughs> yep. She just keeps taking in strays. Mm -hmm. She's got a good heart. She she believes in the best of human humanity. Yeah. Sadly, people take advantage of that. And you'll see how well it pays off for her, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which reminds me, 
Sir Torrin, have you seen this movie before? One guy who can't fight. Hope for the wayward critter. Absolutely. I mean, in a way, you could say to these these guys, "You keep that man alive because he's your meal ticket." Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're being a little bit clingy. <laughs> God, they are staying tight, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> See, this is this is important too because they do mean well. They're just a little over over exuberant. Yeah, exactly. The reason I asked Sir Torn was because, well, I don't want to ruin it. You'll see. Oh! Yeah. Yep, yep. I did not see that coming. Neither did any of them. So, like Sir Torin, you do see that, that Lee Marvin's playing a double role here. He's playing the, the good guy and the bad guy. See that? Mm. Yeah. Why, those rat bastages. Yep. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I love that shot right there. Oh, the sun going down? Oh, is it going down or rising? I think it's going down. No, I like I like how it's all, uh, the offset with with the troubadours. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This is a great soundtrack. It really, really is. 
Now, in the soundtrack, uh, do you have the soundtrack? I don't have the soundtrack. No. I was wondering how they how they piece it together. Do they have the Troubadour song as one thing, or do they have the Troubadour song and then the incidental that follows? And if it's like uh, a lot of musicals of the day, it's just each one of these is a track, you yeah. know, and it's just. It's oftentimes just in the order that it appeared in the movie. I'll never make her cry. Oh, that King Cole. Yep. He sadly did not live to see the movie released. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he had, he had lung lung cancer. Wow, that's a shame. Like, I'm not leaving. This is my property. Ooh. Yeah. I like that line. It is a good line. Oh, I'll, I, I, Sherman's March always triggers me. It's a trigger thing for me. Yeah. So the comparison, yeah. This is one of the funniest and one of the darkest jokes in the film. <laughs> yeah, Nate said Nat, Nat King Cole's voice was velvet. That is probably the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, yay! <laughs> Happy birthday! Well, it's interesting, Nate. It depends on the state, especially out west. It was uh, oftentimes those 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 laws were a lot more lax or non-existent in in territories. So it depends on the year and the fact this is Wyoming. I don't know, but I think it it doesn't really matter whether she could legally own the land. The fact is, they were driving her father off and they're basically saying you need to leave too or you'll yeah. be lying next to him. They say Kurt Douglas turned down the role of, of Shalene and Jack Palance wanted to play it but was never offered it. Yeah. I could see Jack Palance playing this role. Yeah. yeah. And, and but Anne I can't Margaret, see Kurt Douglas. And Margaret was the first choice for Cat Oh, she would have been perfect. Why mm -hmm. did I never think of that before? Now I'll never be able to think of anything else. Mm -hmm. 
Is that um, old lady what I think she is? Probably. Oh. Or at least she was, whether she still is. She still thinks she is. Oh, where have I seen him? <laughs> Just about everything. I don't even know his name, but he's a he's a character actor I've seen in a bunch of things. <laughs> Oh, that's Butch Cassidy. Oh. Arthur Honeycutt is the actor's name. Where have I seen I've seen him in something particular that triggered where I saw him. Mm hmm. I got a. Uh, uh, oh, you know what? I think it was. Let's see if it's in here. Ah, I look. Yeah, that's a that's a. He'll drink to that just to get a drink out of somebody. I just remember why I saw him. Huh. He was in, he was in a Twilight Zone episode where he played an old man with a hound dog who ends up dying. Him and his dog both die, and they go. They go on the road to, to heaven. Uh huh. But they meet someone who said, Oh, no, your dog can't come in. And he says, Well, I'm not going in without my dog. It's it's a Twilight Zone episode. That's where. That's right. That's right. I That's what triggered it for me. Evelyn said, Yeah, she, she confirmed Twilight Zone. Yeah. I like how she thinks. <laughs> All that plan. <laughs> oh, he was the uh, the uh, bartender in uh, 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 um, Trouble with Tribbles. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. And an uncle. Oh. I thought they said they'd never make her cry. Well, they didn't. They did. Yep. Arthur Honeycutt. It doesn't say he was in Star Trek. Oh, well, this guy looks familiar, too.
you see the setup for the joke here. There's a guy in a tub on a train. A train that's about to be robbed. Yeah, those weren't phone lines. Those are telegraph lines. Yeah, that's what those are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See? Oh. Ba boom Yeah. My word. Oh, yeah, yeah, I gotta have a gun out. <laughs> Everyone's getting robbed is laughing. It's like, well, if we're going to get robbed, at least we get a laugh out of it. Yeah, they weren't expecting that. Shoot him in the arm or the leg. <laughs> That's how you do it. Is that right? Yeah, bang. <laughs> They're going to booger us around. <laughs> Another towel. You see where this is going, right? Yeah, which one of them has the money? Good question. I don't know. But no, that's not what I was getting at. <laughs> down, 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 down. 
<laughs> this is some seriously good riding. We were robbed. We were robbed. <laughs> they were robbed. They were robbed. I'm only half shaved. Sounds like a personal problem to me. Well, yeah. Who the posse? Mm hmm. Geek flag with Nate says. Did you know when the U.S. first started printing paper money, they only made them into denominations of $1 bills and $2 bills? Well, you know, that was before inflation started making that work. Let's head them up at the pass, Evelyn said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Following the drunk guy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah, okay. You don't remember you. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he started uh, cheering a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk while in the saddle, Dwitz. Never meet your heroes. Yep. Or in this case, the villains.
Yeah, I guess. Just like that episode of the Brady Bunch where Bobby was all about Jesse James. Yeah, yeah. It's funny you oh, mentioned that because that guy that, uh, that, that, that couldn't remember his own name, he was in that episode. He was the one telling Bobby the story. Oh, yeah. That's pretty wild. <laughs> the one thing I loved about that episode was they they had him watching the show, uh, the the film that they remembered going to see, and then realizing on television it was edited. Right. So it seemed like a very different story. Yeah, his name's Burt Mustin. Yep, Brady Bunch. Jethro Collins, episode Bobby's Heroes. Mm-hmm. He was also in the Kick the Can episode, The Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. Man, I love actors like this. Yep. You just start in everything. Oh, he was in the Ghost of Mr. Chicken, too. Pork chops and applesauce. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, mate. So good. Ooh. Yeah. Bold words. Right here in River City. <laughs> I need to do a rewatch of that one someday. Music Man? I've yeah. Never seen, I've never seen it. Really? Oh, um, I've been wanting to. Especially since Hugh Jackman's been in it on Broadway. Oh, has he? That makes sense. Yeah. I I think, though, if I'm going to do a, a, a watch party of, of uh, Music Man, I think we need... Uh, I think we need Sir Torin to uh, to join us that night. See, this is the old trope in the movies where the the guy doesn't want to fall in love, he doesn't want to be serious, so he, you know, pushes to break up, and it, it's a contrived, you know. Mm -hmm problem I like how he corrects the school teacher's grammar. So that's interesting, Sir Torin. You've 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 heard the 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 soundtrack, never seen the film or or the play. Uh, could still be a good watch. I think uh, I think it would be a good one. Whoa! Yeah, it's Tycho Brahe. <laughs> you got that joke. Thank God. <laughs> Anybody who gets that joke is uh, pretty cool. 
Why didn't y'all shoot him? Yeah. Yeah, Nate, they'll do that. It's the best thing that can happen to you, though. Trust me, I know. So did you catch that? He's he's not okay. He's trying to detox. Yep. He really is. We need a training montage. <laughs> oh, this is the closest you're going to get. Hot on fire. Yeah, right. You're the best around. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. There's now, I family. love this because this is like the knight preparing for battle and his squire, you know, yeah. helping him, you know, getting his armor for him and whatnot. If that water was that hot, it would have burnt them. It makes me wonder if it's like w really hot water and it's like really cold on this set. Or it's got some dry ice in it to give it all that. Yeah, you could burn yourself that way too. Just No, but I mean if they like yeah. taped a piece to the bottom of the bucket so when he dumped it, it oh, didn't fall out. Oh, I see out. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bucket's not still steaming, so hmm. Because even a little bit of water would still be doing it. Exactly, Evelyn. The knight and the squire. <laughs> but his armor is, uh, <laughs> is is a girdle. Ha! <laughs> 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 Start in the middle, work your way up, then work your way down. Yep. <laughs> hey, don't do that. I know it's they're going for humor. I mean, he cleans up really good. He didn't fancy. Yeah. So that's what he was carrying around in that in that box. The kid Shaleen outfit. And for a second I was thinking, oh, he was a he was a wrestling champ. <laughs> There's the pearl handles. No, 
Looking pretty slick there. Yeah. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so Tor says, so this is the con origin we never we never got. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> Spurs and all. Yep, check out the boots, yeah. These two harmonize really well. Yeah, exactly. Whoops. <laughs> okay, not that one. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, something behind. Yeah, there. it's like there was something in there. I don't know how to know. She Because you're my brother. Oh, spoilers. Hey, really? Yes. Oh. They're played by the same actor. So what? <laughs> yep. Yeah, she had no idea. She's 
So, Torin, that's why I asked you if you'd uh, if you'd seen this one before, because uh, when I first uh, saw this in uh, uh, Game of Thrones, the the Cleganes, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is just like Kid Shaleen." See, he's still trying to protect her. Mm -hmm. George Sanders certainly enjoyed his ale. There you go. Yeah. See, yeah, it's like I I don't want to go to St. Louis, but I also don't want to die. There's something in between yeah. here. She is a fickle little thing. <laughs> Wash your socks. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Don't listen to her, marry her. <laughs> So it's like everyone's, yeah, everyone's gonna get their legs in on him. Well, everybody else was doing it. He's right. He's absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, really. <sighs> Wide open space as she takes her shawl off. Gosh, yeah, Anne Margaret would have been perfect in this role. Oh, yeah. Especially as a redhead. Right?
The Englishman was Commodore Schmidlap in the 1966 Batman movie. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a spitting image of Burgess Meredith, isn't he? In other words, make yourself scarce, kid. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. I like how he says her name, Miss Badger. Mm hmm. Whoa. Well, he was shot. Yeah. It was an accident. There you go. Which brings us back to where we started. Yeah. Sure she does. Comfort the center and the sea land in the fold. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect because it comes right after he says you haven't got a friend in the world. Got a shtick down. Here we go. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Drunk looking horse. The horse even has his front hooves crossed. Yeah, and horses don't naturally do that. They no. Have, they really had to work to get that yeah. shot. You ought to see him from my side. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, go on. What are you?
You're awesome, Sir Darn. Thanks. Yeah, it does look like she's wearing a wedding dress. There's my icon. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Hope he hasn't fallen asleep. He's the most important one in this plan. <laughs> there he goes. Yeehaw! He wasn't even looking. <laughs> <laughs> That balloon. Remember, he's best when he's drunk. I know, right? Oh, that's a sin. All oh, that booze. You know, it's got to be a stuntman hanging onto that horse. Right. <laughs> that is not an easy thing to do. Those, that, that stunt riding. Oh, it's not even easy for the horse. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. The the two minstrels were called shouters. The only the only thing that that bothers me is that the sheriff didn't get plugged. He needed to to get yeah. dead too. But uh, yeah, smell smacked off his face. I I <laughs> love this movie. I really really do. That was a lot of fun, man. I I I love a good comedy western, and. It's not going to be, let's just say, I don't think it's going to be the last time we see one during these rewatches. Maybe I would imagine. Not. I would imagine. I got a couple, I got a couple that uh, I've been wanting to pull out. So, and like I was saying uh, to Sir Torrin, I, I feel like the, 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 the two brothers, you know, uh, you know, duking it out to the death, very, very Clegane, you know, I'm sure that must've been, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's not an archetype exactly, but it's a trope, right? So I know that, you know, had to influence uh, J.R.R. Martin. But, uh, you know, actually the other thing is another film that I think drew a lot of inspiration from this one has to be Blazing Saddles. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole, um, what's it, Gene Wilder character. Very, very similar to Kid Chalene. Yeah. Geek Flag with Nate says, a great comedy made more enjoyable by hanging out with great people like you. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this is all about, right? Yeah. This is this is why I, I, I love uh, the fact that both both uh, Netter's Network, well, she kind of has to because, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I go everywhere she goes. But but Big Al, too, uh, you know, don't, having, don't me a, having me as a having me as having me as a guest host every week i super super appreciate it speaking of next week big al what are we looking forward to next week well next week we are continuing john carpenter january on my channel we're going to be watching they live starring roddy piper so bring your bubble gum or if you don't well you know what happens. gonna get your backside kicked right <laughs> yeah. exactly Exactly. Um, so, yeah, good, they good. Live, great sci-fi horror film. Um, 
I don't Just, think I've ever seen. Really? Awesome. Cool. I mean, I may have done. I just don't remember the title. Have I ever seen it, honey? You would know better. Than oh me. yeah, we've got it on DVD. It's a it's a classic. Well, it's... just because we have it doesn't mean I've seen it. Oh, you? He yeah. Okay. On, he puts on the glasses to see aliens. Where? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I've seen but it. But the the important thing too is it's very much a uh, it's an allegory right. for. I, I personally think a lot of the things we're seeing in uh, in the past couple of years, to be honest with you, but that's maybe it's just me being a kooky conspiracy theorist. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, but so, yeah, uh, they, they, but but we were talking about um, doing a collaboration uh, in March. We're talking about Troy's channel and Big Al Presents are joining forces at the end of March. Yep. For a special two night event to watch the Eddie and the Cruisers and then Eddie and the Cruisers 2 Eddie Lives. So that's March 24th and 25th. So start thinking about that, which of course leads me to make March Michael Parade March. We're going to be watching earlier in that month on my channel is going to be Streets of Fire, if everybody remembers that. That's, That's a film. great one too. Great. Wait, great this is music. great. Sir Torres said, "Are you telling me John Carpenter didn't direct Ouija Shark?" <laughs> <laughs> he could have done. I mean, John no, he'd have put Ouija Shark. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, it probably would have been better practical effects and a way better soundtrack if he had. To be honest with you. Uh, Sorry, Al. What were you saying? No, I was just joking. John Carpenter's a Ouija shark. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, Nate, we, we've actually done a rewatch of uh, Prince of Darkness on, I'm pretty sure it was my channel. I Check out my channel. Go back and was. take a look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I, I think. Or Netters. I, what, either Netters or my channel. It was right. It had to be right around Halloween, I assume. Uh, oh, I went movie? through and did all three of the uh, the John Carpenter's Apocalypse films. Mm -hmm. uh, that had to be your channel. It was The Thing. Uh, it was uh, Prince of Darkness and uh, At the Mouth of Madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those were your channel, honey. Yep, yep. Because remember, I'm Alphabet. Yeah, that's true. You're, no, you're right. And I'm only oh, in C. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah. Then tomorrow night over on um what's his name? Um, Aged Boomer. Aged Boomer's channel, right? Yeah, that guy. Uh, we uh will be bringing you the geek news, and we're going to be packing it in because there's been a lot going on this week. A uh, couple that uh, Boomer had wanted to kind of gloss over. I'm like, no, no, there's too much there. We got it. We got to get into it. But uh, but yeah, that's that's what we'll be doing tomorrow night, eight central, nine eastern. And I know that Boomer told me last night, but I'm a little fuzzy. It's funny how the the, the drinking can uh, affect the memory. But uh, do we know what's going on with uh, soundtracks with Birdman? I uh, asked him earlier tonight. Uh, yep. He has nothing this week. Okay. Uh, he'll be getting back in the swing in February. Okay. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a personal thing going on with some family. Um, just keep, let's just say keep. Keep the Birdman's family in your prayers. Uh, absolutely, lots of stuff absolutely. Going on there, but uh, yeah, he, I, I asked him. I was like, I got nothing. Got nothing. I just was making sure because I uh, sometimes I I was never sure. But yeah, he he says nothing, nothing going on. But I do know uh, in February, if it goes to plan, his Wednesday night rewatches are going to be uh, celebrations because February is the birthday of John Williams and. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah, so two of gonna, his favorites. Yeah, we're gonna do two each of the films. I know two of the films, but I, I I'm not gonna say because he changes things when he when he did. It. <laughs> yeah, he does. He absolutely does. Uh, I do know that there's nothing on Tuesday because uh, our Tuesday schedule is being moved to Thursday. Not entirely sure why, but uh, Mr. Matchstick was going to be having uh, Agent Boomer and myself on to be talking about uh, 
not not the changes that are going to be happening in the uh, Warner Brothers DC Cinematic Universe uh, with uh, with uh, James Gunn, but uh, what some of the things we think ought to happen or should happen uh, are our recipes for for success. That won't be happening on Tuesday, however, it will be happening on Thursday. I believe that's uh, seven thirty Central, eight thirty uh, okay. Eastern. But I'm actually, not. I actually, have something going on on Thursday. You do? Wow. Okay. What's up? No, I'm saying there's actually something going. We oh, we something do. Going yes, Thursday. yes. Well, and that's why actually. Has one. When he said uh, that they had to reschedule uh, Tuesday, I said, "Well, Thursday's open." So he yeah. says, "Okay, let's make it Thursday." Now, is that going to be a permanent, or that's just this week? No, I'm pretty sure that's just this week uh, okay. because the the fourth that he was trying to bring in. Uh, had a family situation on Tuesday, so uh, okay. And and Wednesday's my D and D night, so I said I can't make it Wednesday, so so it'll be Thursday. And I, do, I I do want to put out just uh, people maybe pay attention. You never know, in an afternoon might somebody might pop on. There you go. Stars uh, are aligning. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm guessing that uh, a certain big Al might have uh, might have a little, uh, little afternoon with Al or a stream late. to do. That's that's good Early stuff. Evening with Al, you never know what time. It could be any time. Awesome. Anytime's a good time with Big Al. Then uh, then Friday, back to my channel, nine Central, ten Eastern, for last call. Uh, I decided uh, that uh, because of the. The, uh, the conversation that we're going to be having on Thursday over on Mr. Matchstick's channel, I want to get back to uh, to talking about what I would like to have done if I, you know, could wave a magic wand and create an alternate universe uh, where I was in charge of Warner Brothers back when Smallville was on and started a an integrated, sensible shared universe for the DC universe back then as a... Uh, a spin-off of of Smallville, but with some tweaks to Smallville that uh, yeah. because Smallville wasn't perfect, uh, you know, no, it, it no. could be improved too. Smallville, so, well, so your Smallville would have been your Smallville verse, is like the Arrow verse was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just for you know, kind of a short and short and you know preview of it. I would have done Smallville. I wouldn't have gone ten seasons with Smallville. Oh God! I would have. I would have gone four years of Smallville, right? And then I would have, um, I Change. might have changed the, the format so that he leaves Smallville, maybe either goes on to college or, you know, does the time in the wilderness kind of a thing. But in any event, used Smallville to do the, the spinoffs that they had uh, kind of implied, you know, the Aquaman, you know, have a, have a, that uh, uh, Mercy Reef series that they were going to do. And, you know, the, the, the Arrowverse being, you know, a spinoff from, from, um, uh, from Smallville. But again, it's not, it wouldn't be on the CW as, as it existed in our timeline. It would have been actually good. You know, <laughs> and uh, and there would have been absolute integration. Everything that came out from DC would be integrated. So, you know, uh, what's his name? Christopher Nolan comes along and says, well, I want my Batman to be uh, completely separate. Well, it's it's really nice, but it's not your Batman. If you're not mm -hmm. going to be doing your Batman the way we want it, then move Do along. Thank else. you. Yeah, so, just... yeah move, move along. And uh and I would have started Wonder Woman much, much earlier. You would have gotten your first Wonder Woman movie long before um, the Marvel Universe started to kick off. And it would have been set in World War II. So uh, that's what I'll be talking about on Friday. So, um, so yeah, there you go. And, uh, and that brings us around to next Saturday uh, with... Uh, with uh, <laughs> What is it? Kicking butt and chewing, I'm, chewing gum and pick, here, kicking butt. I am here to chew bubble gum and kick ass, and I'm all all out of bubble gum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good movie. Good. Movie. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I've yeah. I've forgotten more than I remember, but I I remember enough to know how awesome it is. Yeah, I, was, so, I saw that in the movie theater when it came out, and I really liked it. Do you know they they did uh, Mego action figures of the uh, 
I don't know what you call them, the aliens or whatever from that. I I didn't know they were Amigo, but I've seen I've seen action figures. A lot of action figure lines have done them, but yeah, there are. Yeah. I, I now I'm not 100 percent if they were Amigo or if they were done by NECA, but either way, it's you know similar similar action figures. But yeah, yeah, there you go. So, and then in two weeks on my channel, oh yeah, we're mm -hmm. gonna be having cat people, so you can watch out for that one. Oh, this is a uh, this is a uh, okay. cat the, people, which is the uh, the Malcolm uh, McDowell, Malcolm McDowell and Nasasha Kinski. Yeah, Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sure yeah that's that. uh, oh, have you seen it before? A long time ago. Well, there's a few scenes like, in there I remember like very, on, very vividly. Like on cable, kind of. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Nata Natasha, mm -hmm. Ki Natasha Kinski. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it, well, I don't want to say anything about it, Ruin it. Two weeks from today, I'll have plenty to say about it. So there okay. you go. So, Big Al, any last words? Uh, no, just um, thanks for having me. I love the film. Always great to get together with everybody here and share a fun time. Cool. Thanks so much, man. Troy, any last words? No, I just, uh, I, I love being here, hanging out with you. It was like uh, Nate said earlier, it's, it, these are great movies, but it's, it's so much fun hanging out with y'all and, and watching them together. Um, hearing the, the trivia and so forth. Um, yeah. Yep. Cause like I always say, we can talk amongst ourselves and that's all well, good and fun, but it's so much more fun and enjoyable when you guys are dropping comments on the chat and questions and trivia and, you know, general goofiness. Cause it's not like you guys are separated from us by miles and miles, but more like we're all in the same room together, yeah. just enjoying the film, enjoying each other's company and you're not just friends for us. You're family, too. Great. You know, we appreciate and love you guys. So thank you for being here. And we'll see you next time. Good night now.